I'm Claire Murray and you're joining us from our studios in Walsingham. Uh, I want to introduce you and to be in conversation with Edmund Adamus, who is the education consultant for quite an incredible programme which we're going to hear about today called A Fertile Heart. Perhaps you could begin, Edmund, with telling us where has this come from and what is its purpose and need for today? Well, thanks for having me, Claire Mary. It's really great to be here. Such a blessing. A Fertile Heart, Giving and Receiving Creative Love, which is the, the full title of the uh, scheme of work, originates from a doctoral thesis that was uh, first submitted and uh, approved uh, way back in 2014, I think it was, by a Birmingham priest who uh, studied in Rome at the time. He later went on to teach moral theology part-time at uh, Oscott Seminary in Birmingham whilst being a busy parish priest. And um, it was at the time when uh, he was submitting his thesis um, and a retired Catholic teacher was typing up the script for him and formatting it so it was it was all very nice and neat and tidy and as she was reading the thesis she said to him gosh I, I wish I'd got this when I was being educated and, and doing teacher training and then she went on to say but actually our, our children in our schools they need to hear some of these messages that you've written about and, and researched about and so that was the kind of um, birth, if you like, or conception, if you like, of the idea that these dense, very complex theological questions and themes that were being discussed in a, as you can imagine, a very rich doctoral thesis could possibly be opened up to become accessible, uh, not just to teachers, but actually to uh, children in our schools from uh, primary through to uh, upper secondary. So. That's how the idea was born, and um, once it was felt that, yes, well, maybe, maybe there's, there's something that can work here. We can tease out of this um, theological work material for teachers to use in, in lessons. Now, at that stage, it was probably um, thinking in terms of what, what might enhance religious education. Um, but as things tr um, progressed from one stage to another, they then decided to um, bring together a group of uh, other educators, teachers. Um, they, as it happened, one of the local parishioners uh, was a, uh, a Catholic businessman with his own small publishing printing firm in Staffordshire, where they were based, uh, called Lawrence Tunnicliffe, and he's the manager, managing director of Panda Press Publishing that have produced the, the books and the materials. Um, and they began to realise that not only could it be transposed into a, a textbook and a teaching manual for teachers, but it should actually be something that could feed into and um, inform and be part of the emerging conversation and whole array of programs and resources that were coming onto the market, as it were, for relationships and sex education in uh, British schools. And of course, this work was happening alongside the, uh, the changes that were uh, afoot in legislation uh, that was going to culminate in new formal guidance from the Department for Education for all schools in England, not just uh, faith schools, but all schools, primary and secondary, on how the new subjects of relationships education in primary schools and relationships and sex education in secondary schools need to be uh, delivered from September 2020 onwards. Mm -hmm. um, so the Fertile Heart project um, was born uh, in, in the build-up to those changes in the law happening mm -hmm. and then as it progressed into something quite concrete uh, and eventually piloted in, in, a, in the Archdiocese of Cardiff in their schools uh, and uh, online resources were be beginning to be produced, it was, uh, as I say, becoming aligned with the uh, new expectation being placed on schools of, as of this academic year uh, to teach these specific subjects with um, very um, clearly 
delineated um, learning aims and objectives uh, in each of the areas. So it's, it's, there's been a synergy that's come about which wasn't planned, but then, you know, when you're doing a work of God, <laughs> you, you, you look back and you think, ah, yes, one can see how the, the, the Spirit was actually leading this group of people in a direction which mm -hmm. they probably didn't foresee at the very beginning, but in the end have produced something really quite beautiful uh, as an additional offer to mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. and indeed not just schools, but perhaps uh, clergy and catechists and, and indeed parents mm -hmm. that can be very useful in a very, what can sometimes be a very challenging mm -hmm. uh, aspect of, you know, the moral and emotional formation mm -hmm. of young people, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so when I'm thinking about a fertile heart, it sounds very wholesome, very whole person. Um, these distilled messages throughout the, the curriculum and the way that this is being almost codified from the theological piece of work, when you think about a fertile heart, uh, the image that's coming to mind is, is of a harvest, the soil, and the harvest of the soul. Mm. How, do, how does the spiritual uh, themes and the threads throughout this piece of work, how does that all come together to impact on uh, the young person from, um, goes from year four to 11? And how does that continue the formation throughout the programme? How, how is this all impact? No, that's a really good question. Um, because, I mean, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the challenging aspects about the, 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 the landscape of what we now call relationships and sex education, or RSC, or it's now RSHE to include health. Um, so, the, you know what the, the government are like, they, they change these, uh, these abbreviations all the time and you have to keep on top of policy development. But one of the uh, challenging aspects is, is how to tackle the, what I call the neuralgic issues around uh, rights and uh, uh, gender equality, uh, young people being fully informed about the choices they can make around their reproductive and sexual life and health and all of this kind of, which for us as Christians and Catholics becomes, you know, somewhat, somewhat um, uncomfortable um, because obviously we don't always go along with the secular way of looking at these things and rightly so. Um, but what Fertile Heart does is actually a challenge teacher and pupil together in an age appropriate way at the various stages to just step back from those contentious issues and not not forget about them but just let's let's leave that that issue that argument to one side for the moment and let's look at the bigger questions of what it what does it mean to be human why does it matter that that there's male and there's female these are not accidents as, as pope francis has said time and again you know the 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 mystery of authentic human sexuality is something to be not to be confronted but to be embraced and we mustn't be put off by the mystery of the complementarity of the sexes. It's all part of God's plan. So uh, the, it's, it's, it's taking people on a journey of new and perhaps fresh discovery mm -hmm. of perennial truths about the human person. It's asking the questions in different ways about where do I fit in the scheme of things? What's my purpose in life? Obviously, I'm called to love and I'm called to be loved. That's part and parcel of being human, whether you believe in God or not. Um, and what should that love look like? What, what, and what should it be based on? Obviously, we're talking about the virtues of respect, courtesy, good manners, all of these basic things, which all schools do and, and, and try their hardest to do very well. But what in the context of a Christian education and a Christian formation of the young person um, should, should this talk about? And obviously, um, there are moments throughout the curriculum where we can be unapologetically Christocentric and we can talk about Christ, we can talk about the saints, we can talk about models of holiness, but there are times where we can be uh, less emphatic mm -hmm. about the spiritual and the religious and just simply talk about what it means to be a good person. Mm -hmm. What does a virtuous life look like? And so there are uh, moments throughout the curriculum where the teacher gets a chance to explore with children um, the, the cardinal virtues, you know, prudence, temperance, justice, courage. And do you and, name them as such? And we do, we, we do, yes, we use the classical terms, if you like, but then we'll illustrate what they might look like in real life by presenting to the children uh, examples. So we might use, there might be 
particular clips from YouTube of a, a scene from a movie or a, or a, or a uh, or an extract from a song or something that's in popular culture that triggers the conversation in the classroom or an exercise in the classroom that just enables the pupils and the teacher of course to go that little bit deeper yes. than than just saying well you know why am I here and why am I human and does it matter if I'm a boy or girl etc so um, now there's nothing new in uh, taking a, a holistic approach uh, to uh, relationships and sexual education. In some respects, Catholic schools have been striving to do this uh, all along uh, for many, many years and, 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 and have, in some respects have, have, have done a pretty good job. But of, of course, what we're saying is, is that this is a moment perhaps to go deeper than the superficial and to take young people on a, on a much longer journey. I mean, if we're honest, um, up until now, even when the RSC provision in some schools was of a good quality, it was something that was tagged along at the, at the end of the last term mm. of the summer term. Not to say that that was a necessarily bad thing, but it wasn't something that maybe happened throughout the course of a year in an explicit way. Whereas now, schools have got to do something quite regular, if not weekly, then certainly you know a few times a term throughout the whole of the year. Mm. And we've structured the fertile heart in such a way so that from year four, which is age eight, right through to year 11, 10 modules a year, we call them modules, not lessons. So it feels a little bit more advanced, if I can put it that way, a bit more challenging. And it is, the material is quite challenging intellectually. Mm. We make no apologies for the way it stretches uh, people, young people. Um, and we, re we, we estimate that 10 lessons a year spread over a cross of you know, several years from year four up to year 11, if you're lucky and there's a continuity between what, you're, what a child gets in primary school and in the high school, that at the end of that process, you should have explored these themes through a, a good sound theological and Christian anthropological lens that would maybe just equip you a bit more, um, a, a bit better intellectually and emotionally so that uh, as a young person goes from childhood through adolescence to almost young adulthood at the age of 16 going into sixth form, they are may, maybe perhaps stronger critical thinkers mm. about the culture around them and about who they are and what they want to achieve in life than they would otherwise have been. And this idea of, well, how fertile is my heart? Mm. Uh, and it's not just about you know physiological fertility, which is an, an important aspect of our understanding our place in the world, uh, and in the understanding of you know appreciation of authentic sexuality, but a fertile heart to be fertile in your spirit, mm. to be spiritually fruitful, yes. is the calling of all of us. Whether we end up being married and having a family, or we end up mm. in single or religious life or consecrated life or whatever we end up doing in life the call to be uh, fruitful and to uh, and to act, embrace that that's your call to holiness uh, is is to be fertile in the eyes of god isn't it mm. so it's just it's i suppose it's providing teachers and students together with um with a with a with a and a different lens to look at these uh, everyday questions and and uh, and problems and challenges so if one of the key aims is to create a fertile heart so you imagine every child in the country having an opportunity to engage from year four to eleven with such a fantastic program to grow human uh, f formation and a, and a personal growth to become virtuous citizens what might that look like in 10 years' time for our nation becoming a virtuous nation? Oh my goodness, well, yeah. what might that look like mm. if every school adopted you know, if you think about this the, program? Yeah. The potential of such a program. Well, I mean, I, the, the proof is always in the pudding, isn't it? Now, it, I mean, it's still early days for this, for this project, insofar as it's, you know, it's virtually not known about, e even in educational circles. Um, but we have had the blessing and the benefit of trialling uh, quite a lot of material, certainly material that's, that's uh, here, in, here in, in the books. Mm. Uh, that, that's been trialled across 43 primary schools and a dozen or so high schools in the Archdiocese of Cardiff. And we're immensely grateful to Archbishop George Stack, who from the very beginning, on the advice of his 
religious education advisor, um, a Father Bernard Sixtus, who was very enthusiastic about the resources. Thanks to uh, Archbishop George, who um, really, uh, he applied a lot of his own scrutiny to the material. You know, he, he, he didn't just say, oh yes, that's fine, use it in my schools. He, he actually read it from cover to cover and, and gave back about a, a nine or 10 pages of notes, his own notes, saying, I like this, I don't like this, and all this. So all of that was taken on board even before the initial, the first edition of the books went into his schools. But the blessing of that um, collaboration was that um, the schools, in a sense, they, they were happy to guinea pig the, the, uh, the, um, the raw material, as it were. And of course, what came out of that was really good feedback and comments from senior leaders and teachers uh, about where it could be improved or what they didn't understand or even what they disagreed with, you know, and, and that's perfectly uh, acceptable in a, when you're trying to manage a process that will culminate in an enhanced uh, uh, um, resource uh, in such an important area of work. Um, but what's been starting to come out now uh, is little by little we're getting more and more really interesting feedback and comments uh, from teachers, obviously, from parents, uh, from one or two more bishops, uh, and hopefully as time goes on, um, the students themselves, uh, who are beginning to see not just the overall value in the approach that we're taking, um, but the high quality of the new online resources that accompany the books, uh, which are now um, starting to become available to subscribing schools. And in fact, only yesterday I got an email from a primary school teacher uh, down in Wales, and I'm, I was facilitating her and her colleagues to have access to the online resources, which are really nicely crafted PowerPoint presentations, and we make sure that um, the slides have guidance note for teachers so that teachers aren't trying to work with this stuff blind, especially if they're non-specialists or they're not even Catholics. And her email, she just said, the, gosh, she said the online resources are absolutely fantastic. Um, now, bearing in mind she's a, a Catholic teacher who's the RE coordinator for mm -hmm. a school, but even so, to get that, you know, um, natural feedback mm -hmm. uh, within a days of the new term, was such a boost for us to know that yes, we, I think we're on the right track here, um, and it, it's very encouraging uh, that, that teachers um, value a product, if I can call it, that, that's that's had a lot of time and thought gone into it, uh, and it's very teacher friendly. By that I mean um, teachers are incredibly busy people. They naturally, like any profession, they naturally prefer things that are pretty much ready for them to use without them having to put too much extra time and effort into lesson planning. And why wouldn't they? You know, they're busy. So, but what we, what we provide in the online resources is that, is that they, it doesn't take much preparation for them to go through that material, to begin to own it for themselves so that when it comes to the lesson, mm -hmm. they, they feel confident that they're delivering something not just that they trust, and will have authenticity and credibility with their pupils, but it's actually helping them in their own formation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of the the, uh, the USPs of a Fertile Heart that we, I'm not saying we can, we're the only uh, project that can claim this, but we make a bold claim that the material enables the teacher and the student to receive formation together. Now, isn't that wonderfully so enriching? I often think about the generations coming together yeah, with this fertile heart. Yeah, you absolutely. know, it is from, if you look at the Catholic way of looking at a whole person and whole generations, it's from conception to the end of life. Yeah. So it's this whole journey together, bringing yeah. the generations together in a way, which is a beautiful thing to be able to journey together on. Totally, totally. And, and, and teachers, uh, because it's, you know, these are subjects which will not, they'll not be tested on. I mean, obviously, you know, the Ofsted inspectors, and they'll, they'll come and have, they'll have to measure somehow the effectiveness of, of this teaching over the course of an academic year. Uh, and, and the older pupils are not going to sit an exam in RSE. Um, but obviously, the quality of what they will get in these 
which are tr traditionally PSHE lessons in, in a school timetable, um, which is already overstretched, um, hopefully will be a moment in the timetable where the teacher doesn't feel so under pressure. Mm -hmm. to, I've got to get these kids to this level. They, at the end of the day, they must have learned this. Yes, there are, there are learning objectives and there are, there are targets for them to aim for, but because it's over a 10 module process in the course of a year, mm -hmm. they're designed so that you can embed the learning and revisit the previous lesson or the previous theme that you did the last week or the last term, so that it's, it, 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 it's a circular process. And it may be that after six or seven sessions and in talking with colleagues, a particular teacher says, I, 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 sh I should have come at that from a different angle. But actually it was the, the, the children, that the questions they posed that made me rethink it another way. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't happen in other lessons like geography or history or whatever, but but in most of the subjects, the teacher has a specific thing they've got to do in a given amount of time, and it all fits in with a particular uh, curriculum um, targets and what have you. Whereas the Fertile Heart Scheme, uh, and in the context of RSE and PSHE, is, is saying, look, you know, we're not saying this scheme of work is a panacea to all your challenges and problems for this area, but if you approach it in the context of well, I'm going to journey with my pupils mm -hmm. in the course of this year through these 10 lessons or so uh, in, a, in a spirit of exp you know, mutual exploration mm -hmm. rather than me teaching them something in a didactic way, then I think both teacher and students together will get a lot more out of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the ramifications that has for um, the engagement with parents, the conversations it might trigger at home between parents and children who you know, experience the material, etc. So, you know, when you ask, where could it be in 10 years time? Uh, well, only God knows, literally. But one of my hopes and aspirations is that, as I said to uh, earlier, is that this isn't just something that is, we think is extremely useful and helpful for schools and educators, but will be equally beneficial for parents and families to use at home, um, particularly the, on the online materials. Um, because you don't have to be a teacher or, 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 or even to have studied any kind of theology in any depth to appreciate the quality of the materials and the themes that they explore because it's just exploring human living, you know, ordinary everyday human Which living. Which we all have the experience yeah, Absolutely, of. And, and, and relationships. What do we mean by relating and relationships? Um, this is part and parcel of everybody's experience, whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever your background is, whether you have faith or, or not at all or whatever. Um, but I think we all know, and as Christians, of course, we, we, we can be unashamedly uh, uh, truthful about what we believe, and we believe be, that everyone has capax dei, the capacity for God. Uh, whether they know it or not mm -hmm. is, is in God's hands, isn't it? But we as agents, of that message mm -hmm. through th vehicles like Fertile Heart can begin to get people excited about, well, what does that mean mm -hmm. for me? You know, and I think you can get a, an eight year old very excited yeah. about that or even a, yeah. you know, uh, a 15 year old or whatever. What does that, what does that mean? F if, you, if you have the capacity for God, you, you, the unique you that God has known from the beginning of time and always had a plan for, mm -hmm. Uh, and in the context of um, you know the the you know these the new more contemporary social challenges around things like you know um, mental health for young people and emotional health for young people, which is you know in crisis in, in this country, uh, not least because so much of their their self image, uh, very often negative self image particularly for girls, is exacerbated by, you know, what they see in popular culture and what they see on social media, etc. You know, and they're exposing themselves, either consciously or not, to all sorts of harmful or potentially very harmful influences on their own understanding of themselves. No matter how, uh, you know, solid a family life they might have or, uh, or, or, or the, the loving relationships that they might have around them, there's no getting away from the fact that young people today have far more distractions than previous generations did. Mm -hmm. Some of it helpful, much of it not. 
Uh, and so in that maelstrom of uh, distraction, which is all around them all the time, mm -hmm. uh, and indeed has been uh, accentuated in, uh, with recent events with the pandemic, and mm -hmm. we, we've literally, we had kids locked down at home instead of being at school, where they were looking at even more social media than they would normally do, because obviously they can't look at phones during the school day. Mm -hmm. um, it begs the question, how do we get them back on track? How do we, what can we do to help young people themselves recalibrate, mm -hmm. if I can use that word, uh, who they are and what makes them tick mm -hmm. without the distractions of all the other, mm -hmm. you know, th things uh, of, around social media and, and that kind of stuff. Because they are, they do have virtual relationships. Yes. So they, they talk about relationships all the time, but so many of their ways of relating are not actually concrete and in the real. No in the present moment, as you and I are here encountering each other now. Um, and I, and I, I, I hope, my hope is that Fertile Heart at least gives people, educators and students and pupils between themselves and children and parents, some ideas to, um, to digest and, and have those conversations with the phones off mm. and the devices closed uh, around you know the, the the big questions of life. What 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 you know? What is the pursuit of happiness? Mm -hmm. What is what what kind of choices must I make mm -hmm. to begin to feel fulfilled mm -hmm. uh, and to to feel that you know I have a place in this world. I have a, a calling to answer. Um, and if the fertile heart can help people explore those with a little bit more vigor, yes. a little bit more rigor, mm -hmm. and dynamism, then that would be a tremendous prayer answered I think. So the art of conversation and, and relationships is, I mean it's a fascinating subject for all of us isn't it? And when you think about the early examples, I mean I'm, I'm thinking where's all this beginning? So when I think about relationships in the context of our experience of earliest relationship, it all begins in the womb of course, mm -hmm. which is what we celebrate as Catholics about the beginnings of life and the absolute truth goodness and beauty of the celebration of life beginning in the womb. And there's been a, a huge body of research over the last 50 years, which very much shows about the quality of relationships very early on, what that means when it's cultivated in this way, within the school setting, within mm. the domestic church, within the family, and the resilience that grows when you have an experience of quality relationships right across the lifespan. So what does it mean for going to school? where you, you're having good experiences of relationships, even if it's not so good at home for some mm. people. That's a Absolutely. reality when we look at the statistics of broken families in England right now. Mm. But when you're continuing along that path, when people haven't had uh, such a wholesome experience of, of parenting for all manner of reasons, it's not about playing a blame game, but when we're revisiting or talking about recalibrating relationships in our society to cultivate citizens, where there is a healthy sense of society and relationships mm -hmm. which permeate across every single aspect of schools, the workplace, how it filters into our, our health, our mental health. All these big conversations we have inevitably are leading us back to the big questions. Where do we come from? What does it mean to be a parent? And how do you begin with this kind of program, having those conversations of the big questions in life? And what does that mean then when you might become a parent yourself? Mm -hmm. How are you cultivating this fertility early on, not just yes. in the sort so, of fruitful, fertile sense right, physically, a, a but mind, in the mind, in the yeah. spirit? Yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the, um, the, the, the modes of expression that has been uh, adopted from the original doctoral thesis into the programme, is, uh, which is uh, implicit in, in the title, which is a fertile heart giving and receiving creative love. So what does that mean, the giving and the receiving of creative love? Well, we look at the person of God, we look at the, the, the Trinity and, and our understanding uh, or our appreciation, our, th our theological awareness, our spiritual awareness of Father, Son and Holy Spirit and how they relate to one another in that relationship of the Godhead. There is that continuous, constant giving and receiving of creative love between the persons of the Blessed Trinity, and we're saying that's the ultimate model of the ultimate perfect relationship 
And we in our you know, somewhat frail and fragile humanity are called to reflect that beautiful truth. Mm. Uh, and how can we do that? How can we even begin to, to mimic and, and re replicate that, that perfect love? Uh, and, and so this idea of giving and receiving creative love we explore, and, and one of the images on the book, in fact, is this, you know, this simple everyday relationship between a mother and a child mm -hmm. as, a, as a model of what giving and receiving creative love looks and feels like. You know, a mother loves her child, the child responds by receiving that love and loving the mother back, etc. And then, then, it, then, then it it's constant reciprocation. And uh, that's just one model of, of loving. But it, it's in, actually, you know, it's, it's possible in all relationships. All authentic relate, relating is giving and receiving creative love, whether that's uh, with a work colleague or between a teacher and a pupil or between fellow pupils. Every, every, every single relationship should be giving and receiving creative love. Uh, and one of the visual images that we um, denote to try and help teachers and children understand is, is we, we take the kind of the figure eight, if you like, and turn it on its side. So it's like this, you know, this, this figure eight that's going round and round and round like this, because the giving and the receiving of creative love has no beginning or end. Someone has to give generously without hope of return. And Christ, you know, calls us to that style, style of loving in the gospel, doesn't he? You know? go the extra mile without hope of getting anything back. But if you give and give generously and give more than that's what's asked of you, the return will be more than what you anticipate because, it's, because that way of loving is of God. It has a divine, um, you know, there's, it's, 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 there's a divine circulation about it, if I can use that expression. Um, which is, which is there in every single human relationship when it's authentic mm -hmm. and there's no selfishness or, or, or mean spirit there. Mm -hmm. So when we say God is everywhere, actually God really is everywhere. Mm -hmm. When the relating that's going on mm -hmm. reflects the Trinity. Um, and I think that's something we can really capture people's imagination with. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean we, you know, we have to kind of um, you know, be over emphatic about the divine and the godliness of it we know that as christians we, we take that for granted with some, some to some extent but before we get to the godly language or the religious type language we can start with that very basic concept of of the fertile love fertile loving um with in ordinary everyday uh, expressions of communication um so that the point where we arrive at, well, what does that mean for me in my everyday moral choices uh, and going forward, particularly when as children get older and they start to feel those natural senses of attraction uh, to, to people of the opposite sex and, and, and the friendships they want to form, you know, um, levels of affection, uh, whether they're, you know, whether they're sexual of a nature or not. Um, we want young people to arrive at the point where, when they talk about love, and that they feel love for that person or love towards that person, what is that love? What is love? And of course, love is the word is you know overused <laughs> in our culture. You know, it's in practically in every pop song and every drama on TV. Though it's that's always often melodramatic. Um, so it's it's an overused word and concept, but it's an undercherished and misunderstood reality in terms of the way God understands love. So when we want children to understand, well, what does, what does me having a fertile heart mean? It has to mean that at some point, as a young person, even as young as eight, but certainly by the time they get to 16, you want them to be able to say, love is a decision, not a feeling. It involves your feelings, and hopefully, often those feelings can help make you feel good. But love is ultimately a decision, and it's about choosing what's right for the other person. And I, I always come back to that great insight of um, Pope St. John Paul's, uh, and incidentally, his theology of the body, his um, catechesis on human love, uh, informs and shapes a lot of the ideas of the Fertile Heart Programme. But he 
used to say, um, you know, what is the opposite of love? And of course, people always automatically say, oh, to hate. And he was saying, it's not to hate. The opposite of love is to use. And so when we ask young people, well, what is love? We want them to understand that love is to will the good of the other. Which is lovely and, and total opposite to what you would be hearing from teachers, experiences or youth workers, police, Absolutely. in the realities of, yeah. our, of our life in modern Britain, where you hear such terrible things happening amongst young people mm. uh, of such an abusive nature, <clears throat> which so um, is not about the dignity of the human person mm. at all. It's, it's quite an abuse and disrespect. Uh, in terms of relationship and what it means to have quality relationships which are respectful and, and loving. It's almost the opposite in some scenarios that are, are happening. And of course, so many of these situations is to try and find a belonging for the young person where they mm. aren't receiving it elsewhere in their life. Um, but it's the patterns that are developing when you don't have something like a fertile heart, which is asking some of these pertinent questions in dialogue and conversation with a young person. Um, to help them to explore uh, the opposite of what they might be experiencing Absol in their own lives. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, one, of the, um, one of the lovely things, actually, that came back from um, some of the children uh, who had experienced the material uh, back in some of the Cardiff schools, uh, and this came to me via one of the head teachers, I think, if I remember rightly, but the, the children in the, um, I think it was a year six group of children, so that's the, you know, the, the top end of primary school children, um, they talked about, they, they liked the Fertile Heart, the Fertile Heart uh, lesson when it came around, because that's the happiness lesson, <laughs> which I thought was simple, but, but so rich as well. Um, we, want, we want young people to be inspired to be happy uh, and to think about, well, what's going to make me happy? But what's joy? What is joy? Because that's a virtue and it's a fruit of the spirit. And it's not just about jumping up and down, you know, because there's a firework display going on all the time, though that has its place. But what, what does joy mean for you in your own everyday experience? Uh, and as, you, as you've alluded to there, for many young people, uh, there's not, maybe not a lot of joy going on in their lives in the background. But it doesn't mean they should be deprived of it entirely. So school and the stability it gives and the love and service that a child receives and, and sees in their teacher who loves and cares for them, wants to protect them, wants to, them to learn well. You know, that may be for some children uh, an absolutely indis indispensable source of the type of love and spiritual fertility that we're exploring with them in, in this program. And I think the other thing to add is that the, the, the Fertile Heart Scheme is, it's not saying, you know, buy this and all your problems will be solved in terms of the obligations you've got as a, as a school to deliver RSC. Now what we're saying is that this is a, a scheme, a resource, a product, whatever you want to call it, that will um, complement all the other things that you're doing already. It will enhance, it will enrich, um, um, it will add, add a certain uh, level of um, a perfection, if you like, to, to, the, the, to the work that's already going on. And I'm thinking uh, of a concrete example where in many schools now, particular high schools, they've adopted this uh, programs of what they call restorative justice. Mm -hmm. So if there's a, 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 you know, a, an infringement of some kind, perhaps quite serious, there's been a bullying going on or, or uh, you know, some kind of um, uh, undisciplined act uh, of insubordination between a teacher and a, and a uh, between a pupil and a teacher, that, that schools now have in process as, as, uh, instead of that child being punished straight away, they, they'll be punished or be deprived of something or whatever. There's a process of dialogue is engaged with. So why why did that happen? Why did you think you did that? Mm -hmm. And do you think that was all right? And it, you know, do they take them on a journey of realizing that the hurt and the pain they've caused another has consequences? Mm -hmm and that the other person has an opportunity to forgive, uh, which is, again, comes back to what I was saying earlier about how the school is often very well placed to nurture authentic relating, authentic relationships, particularly, as you say, if that's but not being modeled terribly well in the family or, or back at home, which is not the child's fault. 
Um, so, and there are, you know, I, I, I commend schools for those, those type of ways of handling uh, questions of discipline or, or lack of it in the school context on a day-to-day -day basis because it's a brave thing to do and it's a courageous thing to do, which even at times might include the teacher saying, actually, I, I, I was too harsh with you there and I'm sorry and I, I need you to forgive me. Now that's, that's quite a big ask mm. for, for a school to get teachers to do that. The but I know, that, yes, the humility, and I, but I know schools where that's gone on and, and it's made a world of difference to the quality of relationship then in the classroom. Um, because um, you know the, that 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 youngster then has seen modelled what the school is trying to impart to them, mm. and so it, it has a it takes on a whole new level of credibility, doesn't it? And I and I and, you know and I say hats off to the schools that are trying those systems um, to improve relationships in in the in the school uh, community, and Fertile Heart lends itself so well to that kind of a, those kind of approaches. You know. Growing virtuous children, virtuous yeah, parents, absolutely. virtuous yeah. teachers, classrooms, school community. I mean, it sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. If I was in year four now, entering into my first class, say, uh, of the, the 10 per year, what would I be beginning with in this curriculum? Oh, well, at the, at the, very, at the, very, at the very beginning, it really does start with um, some basic concepts, uh, uh, which they probably would have begun to explore already, already in early years uh, and, and what have you, which is, well, you know, understanding who you are, mm. who, who's your family, who are your immediate family, who, who are your friends. Um, uh, if, I'm, uh, if I come from a Christian family or I'm in a Catholic school, and particularly, you know, I'm, I've been baptised, mm. I belong to the family of the church, so it's, it kind of explores all those, the wider relationships around us so that it begins to give the child some context of the themes we then want to explore later on as, as they move through, through the scheme. Um, uh, and, we're, and I think it's quite early on actually um, in year four and five where we do talk quite a lot about forgiveness. Uh, and you know, what does that look like uh, in your everyday life? You know, and it might be basic things like, you know, um, your friends not sharing their sweets or, or whatever or, or p being a bit greedy or, or, your, or your, your, the temptation to be mean to another child or something like that which is you know it's just normal everyday mm -hmm. human interaction but exploring um, putting putting wrongs right through forgiveness and reconciliation mm -hmm. uh, and linking that with um, the sacramental life of the church uh, is is very very important in those early stages. In fact, um, a lot of teachers have said it, it, it it's very useful actually, uh, particularly in a, a, a Catholic primary school where the majority of our teachers in Catholic primary schools are not Catholic. Mm. Uh, tremendous, they're tremendously professional educators, but they're they're not Catholics. And, but, but we're expecting them to teach Catholic RE mm. and they're not trained in the RE uh, and they, uh, the RE coordinator of primary school has a lot on their shoulders mm. to make sure this subject is really taught well and has to you know, support their colleagues, their non-Catholic colleagues or indeed their Catholic colleagues mm. in, in delivering these, these subjects very well. And so Fertile Heart, um, though it's not RE, helps those non-specialist, non-Catholic teachers to maybe approach the delivery of formal RE, religious education, with a little less trepidation and a bit more confidence than they would otherwise have had as well. So, um, and because, as I said earlier, we, the, some of that early material in the primary years does actually retrace some of the, um, the, the basic concepts around uh, belonging to the church, being baptised, the, the Eucharist, uh, that all of that being part of the union of the Trinity and, and, and our relationship, our relating in and through Christ to others. So there's quite a bit of uh, religion and theology in the primary years stuff. Um, and then as it moves up, uh, it's still there, but it's less prominent, as it were, as you go into uh, high school and, 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 and into key stage three and four. Um, because as it, as it progresses then, it starts to explore very interesting topics like uh, the, the economics and, 
and the just wage. Uh, we do about economics. Uh, we do, about yes, in, in key stage three and four, yes. Well, that's are, interesting because if, on, on first glimpse of a programme like this, you wouldn't think that you're going to be talking about economics. No, that's right. Um, <laughs> which is, is fantastic because that really is about a wholeness, isn't it? About taking yeah. responsibility, making good decisions in your life. Uh, and, and to have some sense of what it means to to manage those responsibilities. And of course, money is part mm. of that. It's part of an encounter of the life and world around you. What does that look like? Well, it's really kind of within the context of um, stewardship, really, uh, which you would expect to see in any um, um, PSHE provision or citizenship education in schools today, and, and rightly so you know, um, the care of the environment and uh, all of those highly topical questions mm -hmm. which young people more than any of us are, are more exercised yeah. about than, than most and understandably so. But um, in, the, when, in the context of the Fertile Heart curriculum, it's it, again, it's just going a little bit deeper and saying, yes, we, we must uh, challenge uh, social injustices. Uh, we must challenge... Um, um, uh, where there's a lack of uh, awareness and social awareness about uh, rights and responsibilities. Uh, it tackles things like the living wage and the just wage. But it also uh, poses questions about, um, you know, things like, well, what's the morality of finance in general? And uh, are there maybe, you know, systems within our modern banking and, and capitalism that, you know, maybe for all of the good that they bring and the prosperity that they might bring to, you know, huge numbers of people. Uh, nevertheless, that, that doesn't absolve our systems when our, our finance systems are used for, to advance uh, uh, greed or, or whatever. So it's just kind of, again, I suppose it's calling upon uh, teacher and students together to kind of press a pause button here. This is a, this is a lesson where, okay, it's not geography, it's not economics, it's not mm -hmm. history, but we are, we are actually going to touch upon those themes as we're looking at, you know, the everyday choices I might make about my money or how I see money or, 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 or how much value I place on money in everyday life, which I think is a very interesting mm -hmm. question. I mean, I remember Oh gosh, a long time ago now, so it was way back as uh, the mid-90s, there was a European-wide social survey among the attitudes of young people from 15 to 25. Mm -hmm. And what did young people in that age bracket view as the most important things? And for the vast majority of European nations, young people in that age group saw family, friends and relationships as the three most important things in their life. For children in the UK, young people in the UK at that time, it was money, career, then family and friendships. Mm. So what is it then about our British understanding or the way we British look at things like finance and uh, the economy that maybe is maybe slightly different from, from others uh, or maybe disconnected? From, from the from the worldview of others. I mean, I'm sure it's much better than that now, uh, n nearly 20 years on. But um, I think that that challenge is always there to redirect and reorientate people's thinking about money. And, and you know, because we have to have it, it's just, we have to have it, but how much value do we really place on it? Uh, uh, and as you know, St. Paul teaches, you know, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. There's nothing wrong with money per se. It's, a, it's in a certain sense a, a value-free commodity. But how we use it, how we view it, our attitude towards it, even in the everyday choices we make about purchases, um, says something about the person we are or the person we want to be. So yes, is money fertile? Well, it depends <laughs> on how we, uh, the fertility we attribute to it. Money growing um, on trees. Money growing on trees, exactly, yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's profound because of the whole package that you are um, offering to schools, but to families as well. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, as we've been in conversation, I'm thinking about stewarding virtue into the schools, families, workplaces and to nations. Mm. And what does that yeah. mean for us on a global scale actually so. yeah. because if 
if fertility starts with a very small seed and its potential to grow, which is each one of us, mm. is our soul, is our whole way of being in the potential of human capacity, it seems like this is a very good start. Uh, and if, if somebody doesn't know anything about this, what are you going to leave them with? I mean, what would be the three things that you want to leave somebody with that excites them and wants them to grab this off the shelf and make that part of their school or their family life? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the first, the, the, the first thing, the easiest thing to do is simply go to the website, which is, you know, fertileheart.org.uk. You know, it's, it's all there. It's very easy to navigate and, and very informative. And we, we're, we're, unlike many websites, we're refreshing it all the time. So it's always worth visiting and revisiting you know, a, a good few times a month uh, because there's always new material up there. So that's the first thing. The other thing I would say is to, um, if you're, as a parent or teacher, you really want to get into this in a little bit more detail, but you can't commit, as it were, to, you know, um, a sizable um, uh, cost for, for the material, for either for your school or for yourself as a family, then you can very simply purchase a sample a set of sample books um, if you want to and that's easily done again online or even on the website we've set it up so that it's very easy to go on the site and you can actually um, you know click on the kind of icon of the book mm -hmm. and um, it's all very clever these days isn't it you click on the page and the page will turn electronically so you can actually view what's actually in the books the teacher manuals and the student books uh, online and then there are some sample lessons, online resources there as well. So you can go into a, a year four or a year six module and click on the uh, online resources and it will show you what the PowerPoint slide looks like for a suite of slides, slides look like for that particular lesson, what the teacher guidance notes look like. Um, so there's, there's, there's quite, a, quite a number of avenues you can explore to give you a, a better feel for for what's in the books or what's in the course, but also what we're about um, as, a, as an overall project as well. Mm. Oh, it's been so wonderful to have you with us, Thank Edwin. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a fertile heart in my mind for some time to come because it's so like the fiat that we're all called to yes. unite with Our Lady here. Absolutely. And Thank we, you so much for being and with us. we place the project entirely under her protection and care. It's so. wonderful. Thanks. God bless you. Thank you, Claire Mary. Thank you. Thank you.